All right, this is Aquamarine. Came from Madagascar. It's about uh, 15.6 carats. And this is what I'll be using for today's uh, cutting project. For this piece of aquamarine, I found an interesting design I would like to try called Old Mine Burying Number no. 1 by Robert Long. Here is the information on this design and a rendering of how this design should look if I cut it correctly. This design can be found on the web at facetdiagrams.org. Now there are many places to find gem fastening diagrams and I wish there was just one place to go look and find them all but that's just not the case yet. And I believe that facetdiagrams.org currently has the largest database of designs, at least from all the places I know of where you can find fasting diagrams. Let me walk you through how to find this design online at facetdiagrams.org. From the home page, select search. In the search page, select the shape you're looking for, in this case, an old mine design and you select that in the drop-down. I also select 96 for the index gear. You don't have to, um, but that way I don't bother looking at designs where I would need to switch to a different index gear. I prefer not to have to change index gears in my machine as the 96 is good for the vast majority of designs created so far. I also select the box, only show open designs with GEMCAD ASC files and cutting instructions. That way, I will only see designs where the designer has included the cutting instructions and designs which I could, for example, load into my GEMCUT Studio software and evaluate or tweak the design using GCS. Uh, for those designs where the cutter did not choose to share uh, their cutting instructions for their design, that's great but I don't want to look at them at this time since I can't cut them anyway without the instructions. Maybe when I'll have time, I'll go back and look at all those designs without instructions just to see if I find a design that looks pretty cool. Finally, again, just my preference, I click 1,000 results per page so that I basically see all the designs in this shape that I've selected at once. And when I have my selections, I go to search. Here are all the old mine designs in this database, which use the 96 gear uh, index tooth and where the cutting instructions are also provided. So I just go down the page and look through all these designs. There's some basic information listed for each design, but I mainly look for something that really piques my interest. Some are very interesting and I'll be back in the future to cut some of these and eventually I find the design I want. In this case, Old Mine Barrier Number 1. When I select the design, I get all the information, including the cutting instructions, and I again, just my preference, save the design to my personal computer, and then I move the design, the file, to my GCS database on my computer where I can uh, use GemCut Studio to further evaluate the design. Okay, for my Aquamarine, the First thing I need to do is uh, grind a flat spot to attach the dock to. So I've got my ceramic uh, lap, which is my flattest lap here as a, as a master lap. And I'll use a topper. This is a 600 grit topper. You can buy them various places, various qualities. They're not expensive. And I'm gonna use that to uh, grind a flat spot. So I've got to put the uh, splash guard down so you can see. So I'll use a sponge and put it in here so the water doesn't splash all over the place. And bring my drip tray in, my drip tank. And then just by hand, I will uh, grind a flat spot. Uh... 
So I've got a flat spot there and I will attach that to the dop and we're ready to start cutting our aquamarine. Okay, so I clean everything off with a paper towel with denatured alcohol, just get any of the uh, dust off of the stone. The dop I'm going to use, uh, make sure I've cleaned that so I get a nice a contact with the uh, super glue. The first dop I'm gonna use to help center the stone and the uh, dop I'm gonna use in the bottom part of my transfer fixture. Clean it all off. And then I get a small piece of modeling clay and just work it into the shape I want. And then I'll put the modeling clay on the, uh, the bottom dop. And that's because the stone on the bottom is not flat. So the modeling clay will help hold the stone in place as it kind of, you push it into the modeling clay. Put that dop in my transfer fixture. So now I kind of push the uh, stone into the modeling clay a little bit, just so it kind of stays. And then I use an oversized dop. I'm looking for a dop about the size of my, my uncut gemstone. Won't be the dop I use to cut it with because that's gonna be, the final stone will be smaller. But I put that dop in and that helps me center the stone. So then I just uh, make sure the stone's centered and push it into the modeling clay. And looking at the shape of the stone, I kind of try to figure out where it should be centered. And once I get the stone set in again, just push it in place. You can kind of push the modeling clay up around the stone a little bit, make sure it's still flat. And then you uh, remove this dop and use the dop you're going to use. And always go a little bit smaller on the dop you're gonna use than what you think. That way if you run into problems and you have to work through an inclusion or something and your uh, stone's a little bit smaller than you planned, you don't end up cutting all the way to the dop and having to re-dop in the middle of your project. So now I'll swap out dops. So the modeling clay should hold uh, the stone in place slightly while I transfer dops. And now the dop I'm going to use is centered on the stone. So that would be harder to do if you just tried to use this dop to center the stone and kind of eyeball it. It's better to use a dop about the size of your stone. It helps you center it much, much easier. So now I need, all I need to do is raise this dop up and put in my glue, put it back down and uh, use my super glue and we'll be ready to uh, start cutting. And again, I've had a lot of luck with this uh, UV activated uh, super glue Surehold by Helios. Um, that's being UV activated, it doesn't set right away like most super glues, so I can make any adjustments I need and get everything the way I want it and then uh, hit it with the light and it, it cures the super glue and I'm ready to start cutting right away. It cures in just a couple of seconds. So I raise the stone up and put a little bit of super glue on it. Push the dock down. And I rotate my transfer fixture to make sure the with gravity, the super glue goes a little bit up the uh, dop and on the uh, stone. I get good coverage. And then when I'm ready, I hit it with my UV light. And in about two seconds, it's uh, cured. And the good news is I'm ready to start cutting right away instead of having to wait um, when I use two-part epoxy, which I still use once in a while for larger stones. I have to wait for that to cure, but that's not the case with this uh, UV-activated superglue. 
and you can touch it right away and see that it's hard, rock, rock hard and ready to uh, start cutting. So for this old mine burying design, it's kind of a, it's a square design. So you want to orient the stone so that it's square as best you can into your index. And so you want it, the sides to be at the 96, the 48, 24, and 72. So you want to put it in something like that, not like that, right? Just whatever you think looks about the square where it'll fit. And instead of having the 96 on top, what I do is I flip it so the 48 is on top. It doesn't make uh, any difference except that the dop retention screw is right here. And if it's on the top, when I put the dop in, it's easier for me to tighten up the dop retention screw. So you put the stone in, kind of play with it where you think where is. Something like that, I think I, it will work. You kind of got to imagine what's going to happen with the rest of the rough as you go through aligning it, because the rough's not perfect. You're going to have to do some preforming. So I think that's where we want our stone. Um, so now I just need to tighten the dop retention screw, and we'll be ready to start cutting our aquamarine. Okay, I uh, preformed the uh, girdle around the sides first with a uh, 340 grit topper, and there was one area where there was an internal flaw in the stone uh, and so I had to make it a little smaller. You can kind of see right there that little internal crack but um, it was all the way down so I had to bring it in until it's up there. So <clears throat> now I measured the stone and looked at the instructions give you a C to W ratio which is the crown to width, which is the upper part of the stone, how much space you need. And the crown to width ratio is 0 0.148. So you, you measure the uh, width of your stone, and in this case, it's about 8.4. It's gonna be a little smaller because I've just, just started preforming it. So you take 8.4 and you multiply it by the C to W ratio of 0 0.148, and that gives you about 1.24. So that's how much space you need on the upper half of the stone. We're, this is the bottom half. So you need 1.48 millimeters. And you have to remember to include space for the uh, girdle. And the girdle can be anywhere from 0.5 to 0.2. So rough, if I have a biggest girdle, it'd be 0.5. So you add that to the 1.24, you end up with 1.74. So then you just measure the distance down here and see if you have enough room for the upper part of the stone and we do so I'll, I'll bring the pavilion down to try to get rid of most of this inclusion okay for the uh, the last line of instruction the P4 uh, I'm cutting a very small facet right here so I haven't cut this facet before with any other lap so I'm going to do it with my uh, 8,000 grit diamond on the zinc lap. Won't take much to cut that. Okay, I've cut the first two facets in the P4 line. That's the one that's flashing right now. This one and this one. So it didn't take much to cut those. I left a, a little bit, teeny bit of room because now this is just with the 8,000 grit diamond. So I'll go back and uh, polish those in and get the meats, the facets to meet just right. So I'll cut the other, the rest of the facets on this uh, row of instructions. Okay, I've finished pre-polishing our final row of facets. Those small facets right there. All the way around on each, each side of our stone, there's two of these facets. So now I'm ready to polish our aquamarine and I'm going to use a tin lap with um, uh, cerium oxide uh, 
bat stick. Okay, I've polished the bottom half of our aquamarine with uh, cerium oxide on a tin lap. So now I'll transfer our stone and cut the upper half. So when you put your stone back in the uh, your index in your spindle of your uh, machine, you want to set the angle at uh, 90 degrees and you want to have a uh, precision block. This comes with the Altertech, this black one. I bought this one on Amazon just to raise things up a little bit because and, and you put that on your flattest lap, in my case, my ceramic lap. And what you're gonna do is uh, make sure your girdle is, is level, and then you'll set the DOP retention screw and lock the DOP in place. So let me show you how you check that the DOP is, uh, that your, your stone is set properly. So for this design, there's two facets on each of the four sides. So it's not the same as just a regular square design, in which case you'd have a, uh, a 96, uh, 24, 48, and 72 facets index T showing you the four sides. Because there's eight sides, the facets are the 95 and the one on one, on one side, uh, 23 and 25 teeth, the 47, 49 teeth, and the 71, 73 teeth. So in this case, uh, I'm using the 47, 49, and that's just because that puts my DOP retention screw on top of my uh, spindle, and I can e it makes it easier for me to tighten it up for, with it being on top. So with the, you gotta be careful because it, again, it's the 47 and 49. So this is the 47. You also got to check the 49 tooth to make sure you've got it right. Because sometimes you'll put it in wrong and this will be at your 47 and then your 49 will be all messed up. So just check it when you've got these uh, two facets on each side. And so you either put it on the 47 or 49 and you can see the flat part of the girdles right here. And this side is the, this is the 49 tooth. So it's, you know, not flush with your, your precision block. So what you want to do is make sure that uh, this facet's flush. And you, as you raise it up, it's got to break, break the plane of your precision block all along that facet at the same time or else or else you've got to turn it just a little bit further your facet your stone but once you get it uh, straight then you just uh, tighten up the uh, dop retention screw on your machine locking the dop in place and you're ready to cut the upper half of the stone the upper half of our aquamarine polished right up with uh, cerium oxide bat stick on a uh, a tin lap and uh, the upper part cuts and polishes very quickly I mean it's a series of three step cuts and you use the same index teeth all the way around the stone two two cuts on each side and an angle of 44 degrees 34 degrees and 24 degrees pretty simple and pretty quick so the only thing I have left to do is to cut and polish the table, so I'll set up my DOP to cut the table. And the table uh, was easy to cut and polish, and I polished it with uh, serum oxide bat stick and a tin lap. So now I'll soak our stone in acetone, weigh it, measure it, and send it off to Bopi. Today I cut an old mine design called Old Mine Barrier Number no. 1 and I used a piece of Madagascar Aquamarine. I find this design to be an easy and quick design to cut and polish as well as the design that results in a lively gemstone with a lot of sparkle. Uh, please let me know in the comments what you think of this design and of this piece of Aquamarine and as always happy fasting everyone. Mm -hmm.